In this video, I am going to talk about designing and validating coverage with site surveys. You know that we learn about the parameters you can adjust to affect the size of a BSS or AP cell. Those parameters are all configured at the AP to determine how far its signal will reach toward client devices and what potential data rate will be available. If you simply adjust the AP parameters with no other input, how can you know that client within an area surrounding an AP will actually be able to use a certain data rate? Or will client be able to associate with the AP at all? You also learn about selecting and reusing channels when multiple APs are located in the same geographic area. How can you know that the APs do not overlap on the same channel or that client can use the APs in every possible location? To verify wireless LAN coverage and performance, you have to shift your perspective toward that of a wireless client. Site surveys offers a way to either predict or actually take measurement of the RF conditions that a client experiences at various locations within the co wireless coverage area. Site surveys usually produce colored heat maps that depicts things like signal strengths, SNR, data rates, and so on, that are superimposed on actual floor plans or maps. In the following sections in this video, we will learn more about the different type of site surveys and the tools we can use to produce them. First, let me to explain about the application and their requirement. To verify wireless coverage and performance, it is important to have an idea about what you want to measure and what target you are trying to hit. For example, suppose you want to verify that a wireless user sitting in a classroom will have an acceptable wireless experience. What signal strengths should you expect to find at the user's seat? What SNR is acceptable there? What typical data rate are needed for that user? Beyond that, suppose the entire classroom fills with other wireless users. How many users can associate with one AP without dragging down the performance? Now suppose that the wireless client becomes mobile and moves around the building. Will the client be able to roam and maintain a connection regardless of his location? What if the client is a wireless phone or a video device? Will the voice or video stream be acceptable at the client rooms? To answer these questions, you should begin by becoming uh, familiar with the devices and applications that will be used in the wireless environment. Make a list of requirements for each type of devices, including the following information. Type of device. Smartphones, laptops, tablets, wireless phones, RFID tags, and so on, including manufacturer and operating system. Wi-Fi capabilities, supported protocol 802.11b, G, N, A, or AC, or AX, number of special streams, maximum transmit power, and roaming aggressiveness if known. Throughput and jitter requirement. Most devices will make use of normal data that has no special requirement or expectations other than the users considered to be decent responsive throughput. Wireless devices that support voice or video communication will usually have a limit on the acceptable amount of jitter. As well, these devices will need seamless roaming so that the, the video or voice calls are not dropped or interrupted as the client moves around. Client throughput will likely leverage the MIMO capabilities of 802.11n and 802.11ac. Remember that multiple special streams require multiple paths to reach their destination. Indoor environment with uh, offices, hallways, and large furniture are usually good places to support multipass. You won't necessarily be able to measure or survey multipass conditions, though MIMO is usually difficult to predict or measure with most site survey tools. Sometimes real-time location service or RTLS are needed to automatically determine the location of wireless devices. RTLS can be used to track assets like healthcare equipment to track rogue devices that might be causing problems on the network, to locate sources of a wireless interference, and to track the location of wireless client within a building or campus. A device is located